Hey YouTube, it's Robert Holland. In today's video, we're going to do a output comparison between four LEDs, Claire Lumimax 300, the Aperture 300D, the Godox FV200, and FV150. I've had the Claire Lumimax 300 for a while now. The Aperture 300D I borrowed from a friend. Thank you, Andy Schwartz. The FV200 and FV150, you guys know I already did a video on the 150, but that was a pre-production unit. I finally got production models of both the 200 and the 150, so I feel a lot better about testing the actual ones that are gonna be shipped to you guys. So I tested all four of these lights in my studio. I tested them at one meter or 40 inches, and I tested them in two modifiers, a Snub 38 reflector with diffusion, just to give them all the same reflector, and then their stock reflectors as well, so that we could see those differences that the reflector impacts in the results. All right, so let's go over those numbers again. First, let's talk about the stock reflector. The Claire Illumimax 300 had an f5.6 and 4 tenths of a stop. The Aperture 300D had an f4 and 4 tenths of a stop, significantly lower. The FV200 had an f5.6 and 5 tenths of a stop, slightly above the Claire Illumimax. And the FV150 was an even f5.6. In the Snub 38 reflector with diffusion, however, things were much closer. Both the Illumimax and the FV200 had an f2 and 8 tenths of a stop. The Aperture 300D was slightly behind with an f2 and 6 tenths of a stop, and the FV150 was the lowest with f2 and 3 tenths of a stop. So in doing these tests, I think that I've come to three conclusions. One, just like flash photography products, wattages just don't matter. It can be used as a general guideline, but for the most part, obviously this technology is changing, allowing brands to jump over and past one another while still having the same or lower wattages. So you really can't use that as too much of a benchmark. My second conclusion is how hot the center is, how bright the center is, plays a huge part in the metered value. And honestly, that might be the game at this point with LED products trying to leapfrog one another is optimizing reflector design, optimizing the hot spot in the center might be the ticket for these brands to report really high numbers in terms of light output. And that seems to be something that Aperture kind of doubled down with their 300D Mark II. If you guys don't know, Aperture changed the reflector design on the 300D Mark II so that it has a lower beam angle, which just means the light is getting further concentrated and that when you're metering in the center, you're going to get a more inflated result. Is it representative of the light being truly significantly brighter? Not exactly. It's just light physics. It's just put into a smaller area. And my third conclusion is that as soon as you get into a softbox or some type of diffused light source, which I think is used way more commonly than a simple reflector, you start seeing that there's not a lot of difference despite all the difference in wattage. Using that Snub 38 reflector with diffusion, our brightest light was a tie between the Illumimax 300 and the FV200. Both of them reported an F2 and 8 tenths of a stop at one meter. And the lowest was the FV150, which was an F2 and 3 tenths of a stop, only a half stop less powerful, despite being half the wattage of the Illumimax 300. Now, for you guys who have watched my FV150 video, this probably comes into question uh, how did I get the FV150 to be metered over the Claire Illumimax 300 when? it's falling short in this category. And there's multiple possibilities. First, that was a pre-production unit. It's not the production one, so it's not truly relevant. Second, it could be the modifier selection that I used. In this one, I'm using the production reflector that it actually comes with, whereas that was not the case in the initial test because it didn't come with one. And finally, I'll admit in my previous test, I metered a lot closer and I did not check the exact distance. I just changed them in the same position on the light stand, which one inch might have influenced that a 10 stop or two tenths of a stop and could have pushed it a little bit more. But I imagine those other factors had something to do with it as well. That being said, now that we have the production model of the FV150 with their production reflector, um, I think that you guys can take this test as a lot more sure thing when comparing it to the other products. In looking at Aperture 300D, I, I've never used one before and I was expecting it to perform a lot better. I was expecting it to be brighter than the Claire Lumi Max. I thought the quality and money that you're investing in Aperture had to yield you a brighter light 
light than you can get with the Claire Lumi Max, but that's simply not the case. The Claire Lumi Max was a full stop brighter in its stock reflector and a hair brighter, two tenths of a stop brighter, when behind some diffusion in a reflector. Again, Aperture 300D Mark II supposedly 20% brighter, but I gotta tell you, looking at their specs online, it's really difficult to see whether that power is coming from the reflector or the Fresnel 2X. Aperture did something very smart, and when they released a new light, they also updated both modifiers that they tested it in, so there is not a single reference point between the two lights on their website that you can compare apples to apples which one is brighter. I gotta admit Aperture that's pretty slick, but unfortunately it doesn't give someone like me the information that I would need to tell you how much brighter the 300D Mark II actually is going to be. More importantly, the Godox FV200 is equally as bright actually a little bit brighter in its stock reflector, equally bright behind diffusion, and a little bit brighter than the Claire Illumi Max 300. So we got the highest rating out of the FV200 here. Now, while that's good for this FV200 product, what that really excites me for is their upcoming VL lineup. Yes, another lineup of LEDs, but they've got a VL, I think 100 or 120, 200 and 300. So really interested to see if that 300 raises the bar even higher beyond these other Aperture and Claire 300 watt LEDs. Now having the FV200 and the FV150 side by side also allowed me to see the difference in output between those two. And I have to say, because the FV is a half stop lower than the FV200, that means I would definitely suggest the FV200. It should be about a third stop more, but it's actually a half stop more. So the more efficient of the two is the FV200. So I think that's the one that people should be spending their money on. You're gonna get more power out of your LED, obviously a higher power, but more efficiency as well. And that's gonna to translate to a higher powered flash function, which I'm going to explore in more detail very soon. A quick note on color, since I had these four lights next to each other, of course I had to see their color accuracy, their CRI, uh, Aperture 300, D and the Clear Lumi Max both posted 97.2 for CRI and the FE200, FE150 were both in the high 96s. Not only are all of them really close, they all have really high values in the R9 and I believe they all kind of suffered in the same R12 zone. That's the deep blue color zone. That was kind of where they all didn't really have a high performing number that brought down their average. But for any of these, you're getting great color reproduction as well. All right, guys, I hope this video helped you out. There are links to all four lights if you're interested in any in the description below. Leave a like if this video helped you out. Subscribe if you want to see more. And until next time, keep on shooting.